Hello, I'm Hugh, and I'm here today to talk to you about a piece I've written and coded the engine for in Max MSB. The piece is called Starfields. So this piece is built on the idea of a ambience which is augmented with other sounds. And I got the idea from a piece in the game Fable that is called Summer Fields. So the player is in these fields and during the whole time that they exist in these fields there is this drone going on underneath this really beautiful cluster chord um, which is played by an accordion sounding instrument or a reedy kind of ear instrument but it has no breath it just continues to play and this this music is augmented then by things that happen over the top. So for example, a clarinet comes in, a bassoon comes in and plays a line, a other instrument. All, all these little instruments come over and play these very free sounding lines over the top and will then flourish and then pass away and uh, another instrument will take its place. So. That piece had a lot of freedom about it, a lot of uh, pseudo improvisedness about it. This piece is a lot less improvised and a little bit more rigid uh, in in terms of that it has this pulse and it, it obviously has a pulse, whereas that was not quite as obvious where the pulse was. There obviously was one, but it was a bit more hidden than in this piece. So. The scenario is, this is your cockpit of your spaceship that you're in, the Starship Quix. And you come in, you sit down, and the computer tells you this. The first musical space exploration vessel, this is. This ship is fitted with sonic shields that generate music on contact with space dust and debris. The generated music will, passed, will be passed through the ship's onboard stereo system, uh, so you can control the throttle and you need to be sure to keep the shields topped up. So during this piece then, you have control over the speed of the ship with the throttle. And this slider will move, you can move it up and down by clicking and, and dragging. But also, as we move through space and debris hits the shields and little uh, comet fragments or asteroids or whatever hit the shield, um, the shields will gradually get depleted and so you have to top them up. So this will be your interface for the actual four star fields. And so if we were to engage engines we would start the piece and you'd see some movement on the view screen and every now and again you have to replenish the shields just to make sure that um, they don't they don't deplete far enough and we can't hear anything yet because we anymore because our sonic shields have been depleted all the way. Um, for this, I'm just going to um, turn on this auto shield, which is a little password I've put in if you don't want to click the shields. But they are part of the piece, they're part of this music, so uh, I strongly advise you to use it, just as they are. Um, so I'm now going to just show you briefly the mechanics of the patch. So. I'm not going to go into detail about what happens in this patch. I'm just going to control a little bit of it right now, just so I can um, briefly explain the concept of how these things work. So, Summer Fields had um, music that was generated over the top of a ambience. Um, the, it wasn't actually generated. It was it was composed and then performed, and it was over the top of this ambience. So now if I just hit the record button right now and then show you a little bit about what's happening. So I'm just going to press this uh, small version of the engage engines button and we should get some music. Okay. So you can see there's this ambience now at the bottom, which is always going on, and you have to you have to forgive some of the the 
clicks that happen. This is only because my computer can't handle screen recording and recording music at the same time as uh, playing this patch, which is relatively intensive because of all the pre-composed sounds. So please forgive those. If you were to have this program to yourself, you wouldn't get any of those. Um, so please forgive them. Right, so section one. I've just clicked this button now, which triggers this section one. And these are all part of, uh, these are all the different sections in this piece. So it goes um, from section one to section 12, and we have a few revisitings of some of the sections as well. So today I'm only going to look through section one and two, which are very similar, just to give you an idea of, of things that I'm considering while writing this piece. So uh, as I move this slider up and we move the engines on faster, slightly more music comes out. So there's this other layer now on top of this that is uh, just this added chord that kind of flickers. changes and there's also this windy texture that gets brought in as I bring the slider up even further. I'm still holding down the mouse right now. The chord has changed slightly. We've got a little bit of these ambient or these reverberant drums that sound as if they're very far away. And as I go a little bit higher, we'll start to get a bass. There we go. As you can see, it's kind of controlled by this global pulse that is always flickering, always going on, and the engines engage that pulse. So that pulse controls all of the start of all of the sounds in the whole piece. It, almost, almost all of them. There's a few exceptions to that. So this global pulse is being sent to every one of these sections and is controlling when they start. Then there's this global time which counts the time from when I started the engines and then this giant select object here every time this reaches a certain value it'll move on and it'll do something it'll move to one of these sections and, and trigger the bang that, that does that that moves that on um, this isn't connected at the moment because I wanted to go through the sections or the, the first couple of sections without interruption so I could explain what's happening so I moved that up and I got those effects from it. I can also move it down and remove the effects from it. Uh, one thing I didn't mention was this is segmenting uh, each, each one of the patterns into 16 little chunks. So I can have any of the sounds activate on any one of those specific chunks. So global beat, global pulse and global time are managing when all of the sounds come in. So as I was saying, you can move them in or move them out at your will. And that is the idea of this piece, that you as the user are able to control how intense you would like the music at any point. So if it's a little bit too boring just being on maximum intensity all the time, you can move it out. And if you'd like a little bit more than just a chill out, then you move it up and get a bit more detail to it. Okay, so if I move on to the second section, we can see this other issue that I had to contend with while composing this piece. So I'll move on to the second section. So now we've shifted the harmony and there is a little bit more detail in where you can get to with the slider. So there's a few more different areas of texture now. So we've got a bass line. The bass line's got a bit more interest. We've got these little beeps, these little kind of spacey beeps that are um, almost almost oscillatory, but not quite. They're a bit more acoustic-y than, than that. Um, a little bit further. You get a bit more interest, a little bit more saturation from the bass line. It has a few more notes. The drums... Um, the reverberant drums, it, it, anyway, are um, are doing a lot, a little bit more different stuff. So I can pull that out as well, and I can flick back to section one at any point. So we 
change the harmony. So if I go, if this was this was a concern while I was writing this piece, is how do I get these harmonies to shift well? So firstly, they had to be composed in this kind of block form, uh, which I, I call a harmonic cloud. So section one is in one harmonic cloud, and section two is in another harmonic cloud. Uh, and those harmonic clouds are related, and they're not a harmonic progression, because a progression is very static, is very uh, what is chord one and how does it move to chord two. But this is more of a cloud because the individual notes inside the harmony can be different. And this is a lot of what I deal with with composing interactive pieces and generative music. It's concerning myself with these kinds of harmonic clouds and how they can be moved between one another and also any combination of the constituents of any one harmonic cloud can work together on their own. So that's, that's um, something I'm working with in great detail with GM Gen. Uh, you can check that out on my website. Uh, but in, in particular, this is what's happened with uh, composing these these sounds. So I'm just going to turn off the music now and talk a little bit about um, the narrative of the whole the whole piece. So this piece um, goes through these two larger sections, which are built from the two controlling characters of the throttle. So the throttle is not only controlled by the user. At some points during the piece, and if I just click section 5, you can see this happening, the slider shifts between red and blue. When it's blue, the user can control it. When it's red, I can't, I can't click it. It's un unclickable. So the AI is in control of this now. And the AI has a few different types of personalities. It has a personality that kind of moves slowly. So I'm, I'm not going to click this blue now, just, just so you can see that. So you can see the sliders moving there, and it's nothing to do with me. So the AI has a few different personalities. It has, um, just to give a kind of polarity of the personalities, one will move very gradually, as you can see is happening now. Um, one will move a bit more um, over over larger distances, but slowly. Um, another one will move over small distances, but very quickly. And a fourth will move um, over large distances very quickly. So you 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 get these different personalities coming out and changing the music in different sections in different ways. And it's important to have these different personalities because of the makeup of all of these different sections. So section one and two would have benefited slightly more from maybe a slower AI um, if they were to be controlled by the AI. In this the, in this example, they're actually not. Um, but if they were to be controlled, they would be. It would be more beneficial for the AI to be slower because those p those sections are kind of composed in that way to be moved through slowly. Whereas some of the other sections, like for example section four and section six, um, have this large super chord that's happening over the over the in the background. So in that, it's actually quite interesting if you move the slider very quickly and if the AI has control at that point and moves it very quickly. That's quite quite interesting. It's also interesting uh, if the AI does move it slowly because you get this gradual build of the super chord or fade out of the super chord. Um, so there's various benefits to them happening in whichever way they do. And the most interesting thing about it is that you can't predict which one of these it's going to switch to. Sometimes the AI is going to be in the more erratic state. Sometimes it's going to be in a karma state. Uh, but we can't we can't tell that. So that effectively means that each run through of this piece will, on the on the grand scale, be similar. But on the micro scale, every detail could be different. Every individual detail, every exact timing of things coming in, can be very different. So it it 
lens for this different playing and even now when I've played through or when I've watched other people play through little combinations of things are happening that I didn't necessarily intend but they happen and they are happy accidents they're happy um, comminglings of two little musics so back to the narrative then so we've got these two characters that are able to affect the throttle and throughout the piece the the start largely favors the user so the user is able to play with some of this stuff and then when we get to section 5 it starts to be flickering it starts to the ai starts to get control over the over the throttle um, we also have sections where there's n not this flicking back and forth between the user and the AI. This is just a, a brief passage where, where this kind of thing happens. Sometimes we have much larger sections that are just all controlled by the AI. Then as we get through to the middle, there's more of this blending and more of these larger sections that I just mentioned. And they, they will start to then affect each other's music which I'll go on to in a, in a sec. Um, and then towards the end, you get a complete blending of the two, and neither the user or the AI are actually able to adjust much of the music themselves. Um, and there's, it, it goes back to full user control, uh, but the musics have been blended together. So another point about this then, is the, the juxtaposition of not just these two characters, but the musics that are associated with those characters. So the user has more of these acoustic-y sounding instruments or these more complex waveforms that are, um, they have been produced electronically, but they are meant to mimic a kind of acoustic property of, of the sound. So they're much richer in terms of their colors. Um, and contrary to that, the AI has a lot more of these uh, raw mathematical oscillators, like saw waves sometimes, we get sine tones, we get things that are just very bleepy. Um, so those are supposed to be the juxtapositions in musical character. And as I said earlier, so uh, they begin to um, contrast and compete for the, the musical space in, in this kind of section. This section is uh, largely taken by the user's music, so lots of uh, lots of those acoustic -y or complex waveforms. Then a, a few more of these contrasting ones where they will compete. And then towards the end, the, the music start to blend together. So we have some of these complex waveforms being treated with these more AI focused sounds. So there, some of the sounds will be glitched up and will be um, tweaked in some electronic way like that. And that's meant to represent the artificial intelligence having control, but, but not a competing control, but a complementing control over the music. And that, that happens then towards the end. So I hope you get a chance to play with this piece at some point and explore the musics for yourselves. Um, there is also the added element of the shields, but that is a, a small little feature that you can explore and see see what happens when the shields deplete almost almost all the way and uh, see, see what kind of effects you get from that. You sometimes get really, really interesting effects uh, from that, especially during this section where there's a couple of solos and um, and things like that. Um, so I hope you get a chance to play with the piece, and do let me know what you think. Uh, I'm going to try and record a video of it, of my performance of it. If you don't get a chance, you can go watch that. It's possible my computer won't be able to handle it though, so um, I'm not going to guarantee that. If it's there, I'll put the link in the description. Until then, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope it's given you some insight into what it's taken to produce this piece and what kind of things I was considering, what kind of issues I uh, was 
concerned with at the time of writing and 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 I think that's about it so thank you again for watching see you next time